Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Nick. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, before I begin, <laughs> all of you got dressed and came out and did one-on-one -on -one speed friending on a weeknight. Uh -huh. Let us begin with a round of applause for all of you coming out here tonight. It means a lot to me and everybody else, and you know, getting out of the uh, house is pretty hard. So my name is Dave Martin, and I am the co-founder of Puzzle Break, and sometimes called the founding father of escape rooms. In fact, I rather like being called the founding father of escape rooms. I'm going to ask you all to call me the founding father of escape rooms, and thank you all for coming. So the design of this talk went through several iterations. It was either too long, or too subjective, or too boring or some pretty awesome combination of the three. So this is a compromise talk. We're gonna go over some of the heavy hitters with a bit of a contemporary focus. And if you wanna dive in any of this stuff or talk more of the design of puzzles, I invite you all to see me after class. And last bit before we begin, you will notice that our journey today is an interactive one. I have included a couple of puzzles in this presentation for you to solve. Get a puzzle right, and you win a prize. Yeah! Yeah, what's the prize? I'm glad you asked. Why, it's a kudos on LinkedIn from me to you. Yes, yes. Impress your friends, family, coworkers from three jobs again, go, uh, with my glowing praise of your awesome talents. Now, I know that this was advertised as an evening uh, full of enrichment, of education and comedy, and this seems like a wonderful opportunity to do two things. One, look at this slide and manage your expectations of my ability to deliver on that enrichment. <laughs> And to be advised that unlike uh, Ralph, there is no refunds for my portion of the time. <laughs> so with that, I thought it might be helpful to explicitly define some of the terms we'll be talking about this evening. And for this, I decided to turn to the most trusted resource on the internet. <laughs> so that was a joke, but actually the top definition of metagribology is an urban dictionary is actually objectively correct. Metagribology is simply the study of puzzles. What's a puzzle? Sadly, Urban Dictionary was not so great with this definition. <laughs> so this is the actual definition. A toy, problem, or other contrivance designed to amuse by presenting difficulties to be solved by ingenuity or patient effort. This is the definition I like the most. And notice how broad it is. A lot of things are actually puzzles. Which brings us to our first puzzle of the evening. I'm gonna show a message on the screen. If you can decipher it, just shout it out, all right? Are you ready? Go. Just shout it out when you got it. I didn't hear you. I need that louder so everybody can. <laughs> you are cute. The answer to that puzzle. <laughs> this is an objectively correct cipher puzzle. We'll get into more of that later. So, with that truism out of the way, let's discuss the very first puzzle that we know about, which is known by many names. Ostomachian, Syntomachian, Stomachian, Iophilus Archimedes, or most commonly, Archimedes Box. Uh, we don't actually know which of these names came first. We think it's Ostomachian, which, com yeah, which comes from the Greek that. This is not a puzzle, but anyone like hazard a guess what that means? Three, two, one, you're wrong. It's bone fight! <laughs> Which 
which demonstrates that puzzles have always been extremely metal. <laughs> so what was Archimedes' box? Well, what we know is it's 2,200 years old. It's a collection of those exact shapes in that box that could be used as a game or probably educational tool where you could take the pieces out and make any of these nine plus shapes or try and get the pieces back into the box. A recurring theme that we will see time and time again over the history of puzzles are the same general concepts, just even slightly modified over enormous lengths of time. This puzzle is 2,200 years old, and I imagine it looks kind of familiar, yeah? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Moving on, puzzles aren't just for funsies. Sometimes they're useful. Throughout history, there has been a need to conceal the true meaning of messages. Thus came about cryptography, which is defined as the use of codes and ciphers to protect secrets, which is not too far removed from the actual textbook definition of puzzle. Uh, cryptography comes from, eh, uh, which roughly translates into hidden or secret writing. Now, rudimentary cryptography has been around forever. Puzzle number one, I have forgotten the answer to puzzle number one. Can anyone remind me what that was? No, thank you, you are cute. Uh, this is a, what's called a Caesar cipher. Uh, Julius C, that we just shifted the letters. If you did not follow along, by the way, you just took those letters and moved it up one. So T became U, R becomes S, that kind of thing. Julius Caesar was doing this thousands of years ago, although I'm told he liked to use a three shift. Now this brings us to our second puzzle of the evening, which is not so much a puzzle as a trivia question. Can anyone tell me the bloodiest single day battle in American history? Antietam. Antietam is the, for reference, Gettysburg was a three day battle and more people were casual teed over those three days. But in one day, it's the Battle of Antietam, also known as the Battle of Sharpsburg. What does this have to do with cryptography? I am so glad you asked. So up until this point in the Civil War, the Army of Northern Virginia, AKA the South, was kicking the shit out of the Army of the Potomac, AKA the North. And four days before this battle happened, a northern corporal came upon an abandoned Confederate camp, discovered an envelope, and inside of that envelope was Special Order 191. A highly detailed outline of all Confederate plans for this battle, and that message was unencrypted. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, oops. <laughs> the information that the Union Army got it was so significant that many scholars feel that any chance the Confederacy had immediately evaporated with the discovery of this message. After that battle, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, and the rest is literally history. Let this be a lesson to you. If you get a phone call, somebody asks for your credit card information or social security number or detailed true movements, you just hang up the phone and you're going to be fine. <laughs> Uh, another example of applied puzzles, does anyone know what this is called? Not actually a puzzle, but can anyone recognize this? Uh, it's the Enigma machine. It was used by the Germans during World War II to encrypt their stuff. Super advanced, and that was broken uh, famously by Alan Turing and the big brains at Bletchley Park. Uh, you can watch the movie The Imitation Game for a really oversimplified version of this story. Uh, and last bit of cryptography, not really a bit of history. I just think it's really cool. Uh, this is a sculpture outside of CIA headquarters. It's called Cryptos, and it was erected 43 years ago. It's got four different sections with four different messages, all encrypted with four different methods. It took them eight years, them, I mean society, civilization, to break the first one, and the fourth message remains unsolved to this very day. Uh, now, any talk about puzzles would not be complete without some special mention to the granddaddy of them all, the Jigsaw. Now, the inventor of the jigsaw puzzle was, of course, this man. <laughs> yeah, easy jokes, right? <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. It was this man, John Spilsbury. No, just kidding, that's not him either. You see, he was a engraver and publisher, and that's just one of the things that he made. I can't actually find a picture of this man. Uh, but most importantly, he was also a cartographer. It's somewhere in the range of 1760, 1766. 
He had the great idea to take one of his maps, stick it on some hardwood, and cut it along country borders so that it could be used as an educational tool. That's the first jigsaw puzzle, although it technically wasn't a jigsaw puzzle. We'll get into that in a moment. Now, for the next 100 years, that puzzle type stayed mostly the same. They, um, again, not jigsaws. They would be known today as dissection or transformation puzzles. Uh, but this was a cut-up series of shapes that you have to reassemble for educational purposes. Does that sound familiar? 2,200 years? Well, at that point, probably like 2,000 years. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, Jigsaw has evolved meaningfully in 1880. The treadle saw, uh, which is that, uh, also known by a more popular name, the jigsaw, was invented in 1865, and shortly after, our friends at Milton Bradley made the first kind of modern jigsaw puzzle, which was titled The Smashed Up Locomotive, <laughs> further illustrating the um, rich and storied metal tradition of puzzle making. What subgenre of metal is that? Uh, you know, uh, puzzle craft. Uh, it's, it's kind of fallen out of favor. Uh, but no, it's real hard, real hard stuff. <laughs> Uh, next up, the crossword puzzle. These have been around in one form or another since the 19th century, but appeared in their modern form here in 1913 in the New York world, uh, made by Arthur Wynne. And this is the very first one. You'll note they had to give you a word, because how do you solve a crossword puzzle if you've never seen anything like that before? Um, now, Arthur Wynne at the time is from England. He was working at the New York world. Before he worked at the New York world, does anyone happen to know where he worked? I'm going to be really impressed. He worked at the Pittsburgh Press. Yeah! Round of applause for our kind of hometown boy. Yeah, he was really into the Steelers, I'm told. Uh, and just special mention to... Um, Oh, yeah, we're big fans of this crossword. This is the most amazing crossword puzzle ever constructed, a lot of people will tell you. Uh, this was made by Jeremiah Farrell, he was a math professor, and it was created before the 1996 presidential election. And what makes it so amazing, it's got seven different clue answer pairs with seven different correct answers that made it so that the next day the puzzle would be correct no matter who won the election. <laughs> I was like, no, they're not going to like this slide. But like, all right, I'm really, I'm glad that that made it in. Now, over 100 years later, we just saw the last one, they're kind of similar to their original form. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Next up, puzzles and video games. Yeah. And so in the past 50 years, technology has taken puzzles to increasingly awesome levels of, well, lots of stuff. Perhaps chief among these are uh, interactivity and immersion. Now, more than ever, solving a puzzle gives the player some endorphin fueled feedback and advances the game's story. Games like Zork in the 70s and Myst, yeah, Myst in the 90s, heralded a whole new era of puzzledom, puzzle driven interactive fiction. Players today are able to experience amazing narrative stories that are unlocked literally and figuratively with these solving of puzzles. And puzzle experiences in video games continue to evolve every day. Starting in the 90s, a dedicated subgenre of puzzle games started to emerge, escape games. The narratives and themes of puzzles vary, but the core gameplay remains the same. You must solve puzzles, usually to escape a room. And in a bit of unique digital first, analog second evolution, these have evolved to the physical escape room. Continuing the natural evolution of puzzle interactivity, escape rooms are live action cooperative puzzle games in real life. Countless iterations have come and gone, but they all share a common element. Teams of players find clues, solve puzzles, and accomplish an objective, usually uh, escaping the actual room. And they have inspired a handful of some truly awful movies. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone seen any of them? Yeah. Just don't. Like, uh, even for me, like, just you can give it a pass. Uh, now, notably, this is my personal spot in uh, today's timeline. In-person escape rooms, as we know them, as you all know them, can be traced directly back to the first American escape room company, Puzzle Break, founded just over 10 years ago by Dr. Lindsay Morse and me. <laughs> Woo! 
you are all so very welcome. <laughs> so what's next for puzzles? Well, there's two axes of evolution that I personally find the most interesting. The first is content stories. Puzzles that take you somewhere, make you feel something. Some of the things we've seen in just the past couple of years are incomprehensible just a gen less, really, less than a generation ago. These are just a couple personal favorites of mine um, that have each pushed the envelope in such a way that really demand that if you are a fan of these at all, check out a couple, but probably check out all of them. They are masterpieces. In addition to evolving in content, puzzles are also evolving in technology. We get technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, as they become more and more developed, puzzle and game designers can do all sorts of new and interesting things. Pictured here is Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, a cooperative bomb diffusing puzzle game in virtual reality, a truly unhinged series of words. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll probably be fine, just cut whatever. So the more things change, it's impossible to say exactly what the puzzles of the future will look like. The interactivity will certainly increase, and of course there's going to be technological advances. But I think it's pretty safe to say that no matter what happens, we're going to continue to see some familiar patterns. The crossword puzzle, virtually unchanged for 100 years. The New York Times crossword has 500,000 subscribers, and those are pre-pandemic numbers. <laughs> Cryptography. Foundationally important to cybersecurity, which is the critical part of our everyday life. Conservative leadership, self-sabotaging at an unbelievable level of incompetence as to herald the beginning of the end of the world as we know it. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And lastly, our friend Archimedes Box. Bone fight, 2,200 years old. We well, hasn't gone anywhere. You can head on over to Amazon and pick up your own copy for $15.99. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before I get to the QA, does anyone know the answer to the hidden puzzle in today's presentation? I only got two thirds of the letters. Yeah. But, but I didn't pay attention close soon enough. Yeah, no, that's fine. I have that effect on people. I'll give you guys, what do you, what do you got? So I hid some letters in there. They were this color. Did you see some of them? Yeah. I didn't pay at the end. So the, uh, the hint in there is be sure to drink blank blank. Your old Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. A Christmas story, 1983, Ralphie with the radio and the Dakota ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to move on to Q&A, but before I do, critically, we covered a lot of ground here. And although I am indeed a master metagrobologist, I'm really only an expert on three things. Number one, all things escape rooms. Number two, the Marvel Snap collectible card game. <laughs> and three, lovemaking. <laughs> so, you can ask me whatever you want, but the closer it is to these three things, the better my answers will be. So with that, I'll hand it over. <laughs> Nate, everyone, please give it up. Pretty.